a final idea and concept that we wanted to present to you about firewalls is if the politics don't allow you to move the firewall simply to protect your servers, but you have things that need better access to the internet than you can run through your firewall, there's a concept called the Science DMZ. The notion of a Science DMZ is to remove devices in the path from end users to the internet that interferes with the flow of packets. And in this case, we have directly off the border router that's connected to your NREN, uh, a switch or possibly another router where you attach either servers or even end users to the border router that has direct access to the internet without going through the firewall. I know many of you are somewhat horrified by that, that you would put devices on public IPs. Well, I will tell you that on my desk at the University of Oregon is a computer that's connected at one gigabit to a switch and it has a public IP and there is very little filtering and I've never had that computer broken into. Let's talk for a minute about your border router. For many of you, the border router will perform more simplistic functions, but the border router is mandatory if you're dual homed. If you have two internet connections, the only way to properly make that work right is to have a border router that provides functions to move traffic to the two outside connections. Many campuses and emerging regions will do NAT on this border router. And this NAT function actually somewhat acts as a firewall simply by the fact that unless there's a static NAT translation on the border router, Nobody from the outside world can deliver traffic to any part of your campus network without that device on your campus network first initiating an outbound connection. So they cannot attack anything inside your campus network without that machine on the campus initiating an outbound connection to the attacker. So let's put this all together. So you can see we have a border router that connects to the ISP and your REN. We have a Science DMZ. That border router connects, uh, is probably performing NAT functions. It connects to your core router. The core router serves a firewall that addressing your servers. And the core router also drives fiber optic cabling to each of your buildings. Now some of you might find that you can't really afford fiber to some locations or that it's very difficult because some of your campus is on the other side of a very busy street that you don't own. In that case, we will serve those remote buildings with wireless. It's very important, however, that you serve those remote buildings as if it were fiber. Each remote building needs a separate interface on the core router, and you simply build a single point-to-point -point link on the end of that interface out to the remote building. A different remote building is a different interface on the core router, different IP subnet, and a different point-to-point -point link.